What's up, YouTube? I'm Michael, and behind the camera is Ellie. We are the Bill Paying Hobbyist. I was browsing the other day and found this Brass Element Junior Series pen kit. There's a dog. And there's a dog <laughs> on Turner's Warehouse. If you don't know who they are, go check out Chad Schimmel and the crew at turnerswarehouse.com. What I like about this kit is that it's actually made of brass, not plated. So that means we can age it if we want, which is exactly what we're going to do. And we're pairing it with these handmade watch part pen blanks. We've made a couple pens using blanks made with watch parts. It just so happens we have this set ready to turn. These blanks are handmade with real watch parts. If you look closely, each of those watch parts are placed by hand and then cast in resin. The parts look so big that you would think you're going to cut them while turning. Ready? Let's get to it. All right, this is the headstock, tailstock, pen mandrel with the shaft and the pen mandrel saber. This one turns on its own. It's called live. This one's dead. This one turns by the motor, by the use of the motor. And the saber is so that when I'm pushing and cutting, I don't bend my shaft. Junior series bushings. And the blank. Now these bushings are set up they're different sizes. They all look close, but they're all different sizes. You have to be careful. And I like to take the kit and measure the kit, each end of the kit, to make sure they're close enough to the bushings. This is the cap that goes on. This is the very top end cap that goes on the cap. And this is the top of my blank. So it's gonna go like this. This is gonna be the very top. This end's gonna go in here. So I need to find which of these two bigger bushings are the same size as the cap. The cap seventy three one twenty eight. Seventy three one twenty eight. 9 sixteenths. So 73, 128, of course. Let's put this spacer here. We'll put that bushing on and the top right there. We'll use the cap, the end cap that goes at the bottom of the blank or the bottom of the pen. So let's measure this one. Zero. Sixty-one, one twenty-eight. Sixty-five. Sixty-one. That's the bottom. So this will be the next one. So we can keep it in line. Get rid of this, put this away. And if you get one of these kits, this is the Element Series kit from Turner's. You get the kit, when you pull this in, this cap out for the bottom of your pen, be careful because the spring is already inside there. Don't lose your spring, your pen won't work right. So now we want to decide which end, what flows the best. We got watch parts here, we got gold, gold, silver. We got a gold dial there. No dials on that side. There's one there. I'm thinking this way. I think it goes best that way. And then we'll put the other pushing on. That's how we're gonna turn it. And I put another spacer here. Get me away from my mandrel saver. And we are ready to turn.
Фу. The black is crystal clear. That's shiny. All right, now workbench. We got some more work to do. All right, so here we are at the workbench and we did tests because we want to take this kit for the watch part blanks and this kit is a polished brass, but we want to patina it. We want to make it look a little aged, antique, or so you would call it. And we did two tests. There, there's a, quite a few different ways to do this. Um, one is you use ammonia and salt. And basically you, you take a container and you put a paper towel and crumble up paper towels and you put it in there and then you soak it with ammonia, pour salt on it, set this in, set your brass to, in there and then lay another paper towel over the top of it, soak it with ammonia, lift it up, put salt on it, on the piece, and then put the um, uh, paper towel back on it, cover it, let it sit for a few, for an hour or however long you want to do it. And we did that and it did a good job of the patina. Let me get you closer here. It did a good job on the patina, but it also gave me all these black marks. At first I thought it was due to fingerprints. I used gloves, I cleaned it really well and I used gloves and I still got the black part. So it may be air getting in between the paper towel and the brass while it's doing its trick. I mean, it did a great job, but I just don't like the black. I don't want black all over my pen parts. And then the other process is to use a dark vinegar like a uh, balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, something like that. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna try balsamic vinegar. I don't know, maybe. And salt. And it's five parts vinegar, one part salt, and you let it sit for an hour, or a little bit more, and then you cook it at 400, between 400 and 450 in the oven for an hour. You can use a cookie sheet, but protect your cookie sheet with aluminum foil because it may um, tarnish your cookie sheet. We use the glass casserole dish and I use aluminum foil, um, and it did a really good job. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not the whole process. You let it cook for an hour, and then you take it out, and you put it back in the solution for about five more minutes, and then cook it for another 30 seconds, or 30 minutes. Um, and if you wanna get that bluish green color on your, on your new brass, you take it out, you put it back in the solution again, and then let it dry, and it'll turn greenish blue. I didn't do that, I didn't want that, I just wanted to patina it up a little bit. And you can see it. It did a pretty good job this time too. But one little spot right here from sitting on the aluminum foil gave it this little rustish color. So I like this method the best with the vinegar and the salt. So we're gonna do that again. But this time when I do the parts for the pen, I'm gonna set the parts. Spring, don't lose your spring. I'm gonna set the parts in the container on end. And when I put it in the oven, I'm gonna put it in the casserole dish on end like that because these ends right here, if they do get that little rust color, I can sand it off before I put it in there. And if it shines up a little bit, it will. And then that way you'll never see that part. So all the parts that are gonna be pressed up against the pen blank or inside the pen blank are gonna be resting on the kit that way. And then we're gonna patina this all up. So I need to go get my container that I'm gonna put this in. I need to make the solution and I need to get these parts ready. All right, so I'm gonna use this container and I got a measuring spoon. And the first thing we need to do is get all of our parts ready. That one, that one. I also am gonna figure out how much solution I need. Let's start with salt.
course. Now, the longer you leave it in for, the longer you cook it for, the higher temperature you cook it for, uh, cook it at 450 being the top range, the uh, deeper your patina is supposed to be. I did 400. I did an hour in here. I did an hour in the oven. Five minutes in back in here and 30 minutes in the oven, all at 400. And our patina turned into that. We're ready to put this together. We did the patina on it. And after cooking it and everything was done, I took a 600 grit foam pad and I sanded it all down to give it that brush look and get rid of the shiny shiny. So it's not super shiny anymore. It's not patina like it's aged or turning green or anything like that, but I don't want it looking like that. I've seen a few where people have made these with bogwood and they patinaed it to the point where it was, you know how copper gets that green hue to it, the green tarnish on it. I didn't want to do that. So we're here at the lathe and we're going to press it together. I'm going to use these two pieces that I made on the lathe. One goes in the headstock, one goes in the tailstock, and I just use this as a horizontal press and press everything together. Now before we did the patina, I had to take this apart, so I'm going to press this back in here, this insert. This is the threaded insert for the cap. So we're going to do the cap first and we have the watch face on it and that's the top. So of course we just take the cap with the clip, they slide together and then we don't want to cover up the watch face. We want to put the clip 90 degrees, 180 degrees, not 90, 180 degrees from the clip. So roughly right in there. And then we're gonna press these two together. And there's our cap. Oh, it's gonna be pretty. Very nice. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna line things up. Now we have this gold sprocket here and a silver one there. And remember, we've got a thicker end and a bottom. This is the bottom, this is the writing end where the tip's gonna go. We could line up gold and gold there. I think that works. Yeah, because then we got a silver and a silver there. So I think this works here. So this is the end for the tip. And what we want to do is we want to thread that in so that it's there. And then we're going to press it together just like that so that we, so they stay lined up when you put the cap on. I'm not going to press too hard. I just want to get it seated first. This turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. The process we took to get the kit from a super shiny brass to a brushed aged look really pairs well with these watch blanks. Thank you. We know your time is important. We hope this video has brought some value. If it has, take those hands of time and slap them down on the subscribe button. Know someone with a love of timepieces? We might be able to help. Leave us a comment and we can work out the details. Please do something nice for a veteran today. See you next week. We love you.
This turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. The process we took to teak the kit from a super shiny brass, brass, this turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. The process we took to take the, kick the shine off the kit. This turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. The process we took to take the kit from super shiny brass to a brushed aged look to a brushed aged look that I forgot the A. This turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. The process we took to teak the kit from super shiny brass, brass, brass. What is teak? Where did you get that word? I've never heard that used. Teaking, to make it, what, what are we calling it then? What is the process? Antiquing. Teaking. I've never heard anybody say that. I just wondered where you picked that up from. I'm not saying it's incorrect, I just never heard anybody use it. Well, what other word would you use? Antiquing, aging. The aging process. Let me see something. Mm -hmm. 